In Luke chapter 4, we see a phenomenal day in the ministry of Jesus when Jesus helped everyone. Simon's mother-in-law was sick. He helped her. Uh, other people were sick with various diseases. They were brought to Jesus. Jesus healed them. Jesus helped them. There were uh, those who were possessed by demons. Jesus set them free from their demons. It was a great day. But if you read the next couple verses, it raises some questions. So right after that, it says, At daybreak, so the next day, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that's why I was sent. And then then he left. He left behind a lot of others who were looking for help. They were looking for healing. And it's not always easy to explain why Jesus does that. For example, I have a friend who um, who once told me about his brother. When his brother was in his teenage years, one day his, his vision started to go kind of dramatically. So they went to the optometrist to figure out what was going on. And the doctor sat down and gave them some very bad news. He said, well, your optic nerve has been damaged. It's uh, starting to become detached from your eye. And he said, eventually it's going to become entirely detached and you're not going to be able to see. And that's eventually what happened. The optic nerve became completely detached from his eye and and he went completely blind. And there was was no surgery, there was no medicine that could fix that. But his family didn't give up. They uh, they prayed. He said, dear Jesus, please, uh, we know he can do anything. Please give him his sight back. And he prayed again, and they prayed again, and they prayed again, and they kept praying for quite a while, a very long time, but nothing changed. And after long enough of nothing changing, then the, the young man who, who had lost his vision, well, he no longer prayed. He no longer wanted to. No longer wanted to go to church, no longer wanted to read the Bible. He just had no desire to do those things because he was a little bit upset at God maybe more than a little bit, for letting something like that happen. I mean, there's not only the, the physical pain that comes from losing, losing your sight and your ability to function in life, there's the emotional pain that comes from wondering why God didn't stop that from happening. And then, of course, the additional pain that comes from wondering why he doesn't help you in the way that you're expecting. And so he had an expectation of God, like so many people do. And it's not wrong to have expectations of God. I mean, it's why we pray to God. We expect him to listen and to answer. It's why people go to church. It's why people uh, listen to his word and hold on to his promises. God gives us the right to expect good things from God. But if you had asked uh, if you had asked that young man, what do you expect to happen when you follow Jesus? He would have had some sort of particular answer that, well, it wasn't happening in the way that he was expecting. And again, not wrong to have expectations of God. God gives us the right to do that. But when life hurts, maybe just a little bit more important than asking what we can expect of God, you know, what do we have the right to expect of Jesus, is to turn it around and ask, how would God answer that question? Not when it comes to what he should do for us, but what we should do for him. Like, what does God expect of us when life hurts? How does he expect us to react? And and the section in Luke Luke chapter 4 actually gives us an answer. You may recall from one of the previous days devotions that we did that Jesus was driving out demons. And the demons, he was able to drive them out just, just like that. But he not only drove them out, the demons came out confessing exactly who he was. It's like, this is, this is the Son of God. This is God himself. This is the Messiah. And they wanted everyone to know that. They came out screaming that in front of everyone. And Jesus, shh, <laughs> he, told, he silenced them. He did not allow them to say that. Which seems to be strange. You'd want the whole world, you'd want the whole world to know who Jesus is. But Jesus silenced them in relation to how it was that they knew that. Think about how they knew that Jesus was God. They knew because they saw Jesus as God on the day that God created them. They knew because they saw Jesus, they saw the Son of God as the one who drove them out of heaven on the day that they were kicked out of heaven. They knew because they had seen it with their own eyes. They, they didn't have the ability to confess anything different. It had been proven to them. Which means that when they confessed that Jesus was the Son of God, they weren't, they weren't believing in him. They didn't put their trust or their confidence in him. They weren't living by faith in him. And so Jesus knew that these demons then were a bad example for us because living by faith is how the Bible has always told us to live. Living by faith, believing that God is good even when we don't see anything good happening. 
believing that God still cares, even when we see God himself walking away in the other direction while I'm crying out to him. Believing that God still loves me, even when I don't think that that's possible because of what I've done or who I've been. God always expects us to live by faith. He expected Jeremiah to live by faith when he called him into a ministry that was going to be far too hard for him. He expected Moses to live by faith when he called him to go to Egypt and set his people free. Faith was necessary for them to take those steps forward. Faith was necessary for Abraham when he went out to become the father of many nations. Faith was necessary for the disciples when they saw Jesus hanging on a cross, looking like he wasn't winning at all. It took faith to believe that God was doing exactly what he promised he always would. Winning. And winning with you alongside of him. Which is exactly what Jesus was doing on the cross that day. He was forgiving us for all of the times that our faith in him has been weak or lacking. He was forgiving us for all the times that we have wanted to be God instead of have to trust in him. He was forgiving us and giving us the right to expect that one day we will see it with our own eyes. One day we will see our bodies perfectly healed. One day we will see God's family all together with no tension, no disagreements, no divisions, just one family around the Lamb of the Jesus that we will worship there while we see him with our own eyes. He wanted to give you the right to expect that that day is coming. And you know, every once in a while, God gives somebody a glimpse of something like it before we even get there. A number of years had gone by for my friend's brother. He gave up on God, didn't go to church, didn't care. But then one day he woke up and he could see again. Suddenly, I mean, just opened his eyes and his eyes worked and they thought, wow, that's, that's amazing. Something must have happened. So they went to the doctor to check it out. And, and the doctor did the full evaluation and they came back and he looked a little baffled. He said, the optic nerve is still completely severed. There is no medical explanation for why you are able to see why he still can. But his family knew. That entire time, they did not stop praying. They kept coming to Jesus over and over again and again and again. Not demanding that Jesus do anything for them. But laying the needs of someone they love in front of him and trusting that he would take those needs and deal with them in a way that would best shine the spotlight on who our Jesus always is. Someone who gives you the right to expect the very best from the God you believe in. Do you struggle to find time to connect with God? Well, click here to subscribe to our daily email where we'll make sure that you hear about God's promises, his love, and his amazing word.